Sequences of real numbers and their limits. A sequence of numbers is an ordered list of numbers. So a sequence AN is A1, A2, A3 and so forth. This is defined through a function that assigns the number AN to the positive integer N. Here are examples of sequences. 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and so forth. This is a sequence. And when a sequence is given like this, then the first task is to understand what the corresponding function is that defines this sequence. Likewise, a sequence may be defined by 1, 1.4, 1.41, 1.414, 1.4142, 1.4143, and so forth. And here again, the task, first task to think is what would be the function an that actually defines this sequence. A third example is 1, minus 2, 3, minus 4, 5, and so forth. I will get back to these examples just in a moment. Now we say that a sequence converges to a finite number a if the numbers of the sequence, that is, the numbers a, n, get arbitrarily close to a as the index n grows. Later, we will define the convergence again in a more precise terms. Now, if this sequence has a finite limit, then we say that the sequence is convergent or that it converges, otherwise it diverges and is divergent. Our first example of sequences was 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and so forth. So the first task when studying a sequence like this is to understand what the function is that defines this particular sequence. In this case, the function is 1 divided by 2 to the power n minus 1. Because if n is 1, n minus 1 is 0, 1 divided 2 to the power 0 is just 1. And if n is 2, then we get the term 1 half, that is 1 divided by 2 to the power 2 minus 1 is just 1 half, and so forth. And from that we observe that as n grows, also 2 to the power n minus 1 grows and becomes arbitrarily large, and therefore 1 divided by that approaches 0. So we conclude that this sequence converges and that its limit is zero. The sequence 1, 1 1.4, 1.41, 1.414, 1 1.4142 and so forth is a little bit tricky. It is not completely obvious what the function defining this sequence is. In order to find that out, we must remember what is the decimal point expansion of square root of 2. And we see that uh, the first number 1 is just the first number in the decimal point exp expansion of square root of 2. 1.4, they are the two first digits in, in this decimal point expansion, and uh, so forth. So this sequence converges and its limit is square root of 2. The third example was the sequence 1, minus 2, 3, minus 4, 5, and so forth. So this is an example of an alternating sequence. Every second term is positive and every second term is negative. And this sequence is defined by the function negative 1 to the power n minus 1 times n. This sequence diverges and it has no limit. To compute the limit of a sequence that converges, one may often simply evaluate the general expression at n equals the infinity. So one may plug in, in place of n, the infinity, to the expression defining the term a n, and then evaluate that using certain evaluation rules, of which the most important is that any finite number divided by plus or minus the infinity is zero. There are additional evaluation rules. 
So the first evaluation rule is any finite number divided by plus or minus infinity is zero. The second evaluation rule is that infinity plus the infinity is always the infinity. And the infinity raised to any positive power r is still the infinity. Third rule, any number p larger than 1 raised to the power infinity is the infinity. And if p is between 0 and 1, then p to the power infinity is 0. The fourth rule is that infinity plus any finite number is always the infinity. And the fifth rule is that any positive number times the infinity is the infinity. Of course, any negative number times the infinity is the negative infinity. Expressions which evaluate to 0 divided by 0, infinity divided by the infinity, infinity minus the infinity, 0 times the infinity, infinity to the power 0, or 0 to the power 0, or even 0 to the power infinity, they are all undefined. One cannot assign a value to those. This kind of undefined, undeterminates cause problems, and they have to be evaluated using rewriting tricks. Now to illustrate the use of this substitution, let us compute the limit of the sequence 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and so forth. That is the limit of the sequence 1 divided by 2 to the power n minus 1. We already have mentioned that the limit is zero, and it ha can be computed in the following way. 1 divided by 2 to the power n minus 1 approaches as n goes to the infinity. 1 divided by 2 to the power infinity minus 1. But infinity minus 1 is the infinity. So this approaches 1 divided by 2 to the power infinity. But uh, 2 to the power infinity is the infinity because 2 is larger than 1. Therefore this is 1 divided by the infinity. And then by the first evaluation rule the limit is therefore 0. For the sequence n squared minus 1 divided by n squared plus 1, the limit computation using just direct substitution leads to the infinity divided by the infinity, which is undefined. Here we need a rewriting, so the limit can be computed as follows. We divide both the denominator and the numerator of this fractional expression by the highest power of n appearing in the expression. Now the highest power is n squared. So we divide n squared minus 1 and n squared plus 1 both by n squared. When we do that, n squared minus 1 becomes 1 minus 1 divided by n squared, and n squared plus 1 becomes 1 divided by 1 plus n squared. And now as n grows uh, towards the infinity, 1 over n squared approaches 0, so the limit is 1 minus 0 divided by 1 plus 0, which is just 1. To compute the limit of the sequence square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n, one must do a rewriting trick also. Here direct substitution yields the infinity minus the infinity, which is undefined. The limit can be computed as follows. We write square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n is square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n times square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n, and that divided by square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n. So the original expression was a difference of square roots and we multiply and divide that original expression by the conjugate expression, which is the sum of the square roots. Now, this led to an expression which seems rather long, but simplification happens. So we have now that square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n is square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n, and that multiplied by square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n, and this still divided by square root of n plus 1, plus square root of n. But now square, square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n times square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n 
is simply square root of n plus 1 squared minus square root of n squared. Square root of n plus 1 squared is n plus 1. Square root of n squared is just n. So we get from the numerator n plus 1 minus n, which is just 1. And we have that this expression square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n can be rewritten as 1 divided by square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n. As now n approaches the infinity, this approach is 0 because by the evaluation rule it becomes 1 divided by the infinity plus the infinity, that is 1 divided by the infinity, which is 0. So the conclusion is that the limit of the sequence square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n is 0. The first definition that we gave for limits of sequences was that a sequence an converges to a finite number a if the numbers an get arbitrarily close to a as the index n grows. It is necessary to make this concept arbitrarily close, precise mathematically, and for that end we need the symbols, which uh, first one looks like capital case A upside down, and the second one looks like a vertical reflection of capital case E. The symbol, which is like capital case A upside down, means for all, and the symbol vertical reflection of capital case E means there is. Using these symbols, we now define limits of sequences in the following way. A finite number, capital case L, L4 limit, is the limit of the sequence A1, A2, A3, and so forth, if for all positive numbers epsilon, there is always a positive number N epsilon such that whenever N is larger than N epsilon, then the absolute value of a n minus l is less than epsilon. And notation for this is lim, and then under lim we write n, right arrow, the infinity, a n equals l. Here this one line statement, for all epsilon positive, there is symbol n epsilon such that n larger than n epsilon implies absolute value of a n minus l is less than epsilon. This is read that for all positive numbers epsilon, so regardless how small positive number epsilon we take, we can always find an index n epsilon such that when n, whenever n is greater than n epsilon, then the number a n is closer than the distance epsilon to the number capital case L. This is the formal definition of getting arbitrarily close. To illustrate the use of this formal definition, we next show that the limit of 1 over n is 0. And this limit is 0 because the absolute value of 1 over n minus 0 is just 1 over n, and this is less than epsilon if n is larger than 1 over epsilon. So in this formal definition of limits, we may take this number n epsilon to be just 1 over epsilon. This is well defined for any positive number epsilon. Therefore, we found for any positive number epsilon, a number n epsilon such that whenever n is larger than n epsilon, then the absolute value of 1 over n minus 0 is less than epsilon. And this means that the limit of 1 over n as n goes to the infinity is 0. Next, we use this formal definition of limits to show that uh, the limit of a sum of sequences is sum of limits. That is a, a limit as n goes to the infinity, a n plus b n is the same as limit as n goes to the infinity of a n plus limit as n goes to the infinity b n and these are now assumed to be a and b respectively. So the limit as n goes to the infinity a n plus b n is simply a plus b. So to show that, 
we use this formal definition. And we observe that if epsilon is a positive number, then we have to find n epsilon such that whenever n is larger than n epsilon, then the absolute value of a n plus b n minus a plus b is less than epsilon. Now if epsilon is a positive number, then also epsilon divided by 2 is a positive number, and therefore using this formal definition of limits for the sequence a n, and replacing in that formal definition epsilon by epsilon divided by 2, we observe that we can find a number n a such that whenever n is larger than n a, absolute value of a n minus a is less than epsilon divided by 2. Likewise, there is a number n b such that whenever n is larger than n b, then the absolute value of b n minus b is less than epsilon divided by 2. Both these numbers n a and n b, of course, depend on the number epsilon. Now let n epsilon to be the larger one of the numbers n a and n b. Then we observe that by the triangle inequality, absolute value of a n plus b n minus a plus b, which is simply absolute value of a n minus a plus b n minus b, is less than or equal to the absolute value of a n minus a plus the absolute value of b n minus b. Now, if n is larger than n epsilon, then n is larger than n a and it is larger than n b by the definition of n epsilon. This means that the absolute value of a n minus a is less than epsilon divided by 2 and the absolute value of b n minus b is less than epsilon divided by 2. Therefore, if n is larger than n epsilon, the absolute value of a n plus b n minus a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a n minus a plus the absolute value of b n minus b and this is less than epsilon divided by 2 plus epsilon divided by 2 which equals epsilon. This means that we were able to find for any positive number epsilon a number n epsilon such that whenever n is larger than n epsilon then the distance of the number a n plus b n from the number a plus b is less than epsilon. In view of the formal definition of limits, this means that the limit of a sum of sequences is the sum of the limits. If the sequences a n and b n have finite limits, then the same argument can be used to show that limit of the product of the sequences, that is, the limit of a n times b n is the product of the limits. That is, limit a n times b n is same as limit of a n times limit of b n, and this equals a times b. And if b is different from zero, then limit of a n divided by b n is same as limit of a n divided by limit of b n, which is a divided by b. To summarize, a finite number L is the limit of the sequence A1, A2, A3, and so forth, if for all positive numbers epsilon, there is always a number n epsilon such that whenever n is larger than n epsilon, then the absolute value of a n minus L is less than epsilon. And notation for this is written as LIM, and then under those three letters, n right arrow the infinity, a n equals L. This is red limit of A n as n goes to the infinity is L. This is the formal mathematical definition of limits of sequences.